Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little charm necklace. Let me get you real close to the units down here so you can see how cute they are. They turned out really cute. Now this is done with the Christmas um, Dazzle treasure bag, but of course you can use whatever beads you have in your own stash. They're pretty common beads. And I've said it a few times in the tutorial, instead of using these little angular crystals, if you don't have any, you can use a 3 by 25 rondelle. It should work just fine. And just any 6 millimeter round and 8 by 6 beads, um, just very simple. You don't even have to put the charms on. If you have something cute, then you could. If you don't, then just make the little um, stars. So anyway, that's what we're going to make today. Let's go ahead and see what it takes to make this project. Okay, for this project today, we're going to be using several things in the Christmas Dazzle, Dazzle treasure box. And we're going to be adding a few things to it. So what we're going to be using from the box is some of the eight by six red crystals, some of the four millimeter round electroplated glass beads, some of the little red rondelle angular crystals, and if you do not, if you want to make this without having the treasure box, use like a 2.5 by 3 millimeter rondelle. That should work. Then we'll be using the 6 millimeter round glass green beads that came in the treasure box, one of the clasps, and we'll be using three of the charms. I'm going to use Santa Claus, Snowman, and Mitten. And then I'm adding to the treasure box stuff. I'm going to add some 15-0, 11-0, and 8-0 seed beads. These are all Toho, and they are the galvanized permanent finish um, starlight gold tone. Of course, you could use a silver tone, too, and just mix silver and gold together. It doesn't matter. Then I'm using some size 2 beetle-on crimp beads, and this is in the gold color. I am using some soft flex medium, and I will be using some nano fill 10 pound. You can also use 8 pound. Stay with a small diameter because we sew through the beads a lot, and we're using 15 O's. If you want to use fire line, use a 4 or 6 pound. I'm using a size 12 beading needle, and I have put onto my beading needle about one arm's length. Actually, I measured it. It turned out to be about 28 inches because I measure from my fingertips like to my collarbone. So put that much thread on, and you'll need to do that three times. But for the first unit, we'll use an arm's length, and let's get okay, started. To start this project, we will pick up five of the six millimeter round green glass beads onto our needle. Just like this, and then we're going to bring it down to the end of the thread. You don't have to leave a long tail, but you need enough to tie a knot with. So leave yourself a little bit of room to tie a knot, and then take your working thread and your tail thread and tie a knot between the beads. Just like that. I'm going to tie it one more time just to make sure it doesn't slip. And this is what you should have. Just make sure that your knot is between your beads. And then we're going to pick up our needle and this is where we're coming out, right where the knot is. So you're just going to go into the next green bead, right next to where the knot is. And then you're going to pick up an 8-0 seed bead and you're going to go into the next bead. Pull your thread and pop that 8 down, making sure that it goes between the beads really nicely. And then we're going to do that all the way around. So another 8 and into the next bead. Get you a little closer just for the heck of it here. And let's continue. make sure your thread doesn't twist and just give it a little tug. And one more. This time go into the green bead and the 80 behind it. 
And here, I'm just going to cut my thread down so that it's out of my way. I'm not gonna cut it completely down until I'm sure it won't slip anymore. And then, I am going to begin my next step by picking up three 15 seed beads, and then an 11 0 and three more 15 seed beads onto my needle. Just like this. And then I'm going to go from this 8 0 over the top of this bead into this 8 0 right here, and pull those beads down. <clears throat> And then I'm just going to repeat that process all the way around. So three 15 O's and 11 O and three 15 O's. And go into the next 8 O. And we'll just continue doing that. and into the next one. So, when we have gone all the way around, well, let's just do it. I just don't want you guys to sit and watch me pick up beads, but, you know, it's okay, I suppose. There's a fast forward button. And, again, and one more time. So this time, I'm going to go over the green bead into the 8 and all the way through the little 3 15 O's and exit the 11 0 behind them. So I'm just going to go into this 8 0 right here, the 3 15 O's and the 11 0, just like this, and I'm going to pull this down. Now I'm just going to get rid of this little thread by melting it in a little bit. So just get your heat close, don't light it on fire, just melt that little thread in so that it makes a little blob and kind of forms a knot on its own. Now, we're coming out of this 11 0 seed bead right here. I'm gonna pick up one of your little angular rondelles. Now if you're doing this and you don't have the treasure box, try a three by 2.5 rondelle, should work fine. And if it doesn't, you can always put a seed bead on either side, but it should be fine. Now, pick up your little rondelle, go into the next 11 0. So we're going to skip all these 15 0's and this 8 0 in the middle. We're going to go into the 11 0 on top of the green bead and the embellishment we just put on. So straight over to the next 11 0. Then we're just going to kind of move these little strands up as we pull that in. Now it's not going to be really secure and it's not going to look great just yet. It will as we get more in and we can tighten everything. Now we're coming out of this 11-0. Let me get you even closer. We're coming out of the 11-0 here. We're going to skip over all these 15 O's and this 8-0 and go into the 11-0 on top of the next green bead and pull. And then move the strands up and just manipulate it a little bit. And then we're going to pick up another of our red ones and go from this 11 0 to this 11 0 here. Draw everything in. Pick up another rondelle. Go into the next 11 0 on top of the next green bead. pull and draw all of it in. And then this one is our last one. So we're going to go over this 8 0 and we're going to go into the first 11 0 that we started from right here. And we're going to go into the red bead and the 11 0 behind it and pull. Here you're just going to take your thread and gently pull and manipulate everything together like this. Now it's not going to stay perfectly until we sew again. So we're coming out of this 11-0 right here. We're going to go into the red crystal and the 11-0 behind it. And we're going to continue that. Go into the next red crystal and the 
and continue. Until we go all the way around. And just give a little tug between each one. Let me get back in camera here. Okay, I'm going to go through one more just for good measure here. Once you are here, then you are going to sew down into the 15 O's. So we're coming out of this 11 O, we're going to go down into this 15 O here. We're going to go down into the 8 O between the beads here. Turn your piece over so you can see better and then go into the green bead right here. Now the eightos are kind of in the way, so if you do it from the back side, it's a little easier. You can always move your eightos a little bit with your fingers too, if you need to. Now I'm going to turn it back over and I'm coming out of this eight-o seed bead, or excuse me, I'm coming out of this green bead right here. So what I'm going to do is I want to add my little Santa Claus now. I'm going to make him the center of my necklace and then I'll do two other charms just like this. So I'm coming out of the green. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's and an 8 O. And I'm going to drop them down to my little piece here. Then I'm going to go through the little loop on Santa Claus here. Just like this. Then I'm going to go back into the 8-0. Let's get you closer. And just the 8-0. So I'll just pick it up and hold the beads between my fingers and pull my thread through. Make sure Santa Claus doesn't flip around, that he's facing forward. And then pick up two more 11-0 seed beads. Now we're going to go through this green bead again. Let's see if we can get it from this side. Just like this. So I'm coming right through the green bead that we're connecting to. My thread is twisted, so just untwist it if that happens and pull until you get something that looks like this. Now we're going to sew through this again just to make sure that our charm is secure. So I'm going through the two 11 O's, the 8 O, and my charm right here. Back off just a little. Then I'm going to go back up through the 8 o and the 11 o's on this side, right here, and pull. Now I'm going to turn my piece back over so I can see better and go through this green bead right here. Now he's nice and secure. And what we have to do is we have to sew all the way up to this 8 o here. So we're going to go through this green bead. Excuse me, I'm going to back out of there. We're going to go into the 8 o's and the green beads. That way you don't have any thread you can see. So we're going to go through this 8 o first, and then we're going to go through the green bead. Then the 8 o here. One more green bead and one more 8 0 right here. So you want to be coming out of the 8 0 directly above the 8 0 that you're attached to with the Santa Claus here, or directly above the bead that you're attached to. And turn this around, and this is what you should have. Now we're just going to make a little unit of right angle weave with 8 0 seed beads on top here so that we have something to string through. So you're going to pick up three 8 0 seed beads onto your needle. And first we're going to, yeah, three 8 0s. Sorry guys. We're going, we're coming out of the 8 0. We're going to go into the opposite side of the 8 0 right here. 
and we're going to pull these down. And we're going to sew through them one more time and not off. We don't want to put a lot of thread in this. We want to make sure it's secure, but we're going to string through the top eight o's, so we don't want to fill it up too full. So we're going to just sew through one more time, one bead at a time so it maintains its shape. And then we're going to come back into the 8 that we're attached to. Just like this. Turn your piece over and go into the next green bead. Just like this. Make sure your unit is nice and tight up here. And then there's a thread bridge right here between the beads, between the 8 and the green bead. We're going to tie a knot on that. So go underneath that little thread bridge. Get you really close. Oops, maybe not that close. Come on, focus. There we go. Now, I've gone underneath the little thread bridge right here. I'm, I've created a loop in my thread and I'm going to pull a knot down. And then I'm going to go into the next 8 -0. and the next green bead and I'm going to do that one more time. So right here underneath this 8 -0, you can just go right in between there create a loop and pull a knot down and then go into the next 8 -0 here and let's see if we can get through this green bead down here one more time. It's a little tighter than the rest. Just the position of the 8 O's right there. And then I'm just going to cut this off really close. And this is what I have. So I hope I was in frame. All I did was sew around and tie off. And you can do that as many times as you want. And and sew through the beads and then cut off your thread. And this is what you have. Now you're going to make two more of those, just like you just made this one, but instead of attaching Santa, you're gonna attach snowman on one and the little mitten on the other. Of course, if you wanted to, you could attach the little bow that we have too instead. Let's see if I can find it. We have a little bow in our treasure box. And of course I can't find it because, you know, that would be too easy. Anyway, there's a little golden bow in your treasure box. You could attach it the same way if you wanted to do that instead. So anyway, go ahead and make two more units like this attaching these two guys and we'll be back. And this is what you should have. So now we're going to transition into stringing. So I have cut a piece of my soft flex medium. You can use fine also, especially if you used a bigger thread than I did and you feel like you won't be able to get through your 8-0s or you're using smaller 8-0s. Then of course you can use fine instead of medium if you would like. I've cut 20 inches of it because I'm aiming for an 18 inch necklace. So I have a couple inches on either side to work with. Plus I will gain an inch with my clasping. So I've cut 20 inches and I am going to take this wire and I'm just going to put it right into this top 80 seed bead right here. And I'm going to center my Santa Claus in the middle of my wire. Just like that. And then I'm going to pick up two 11 o seed beads on either side just to make some space before I start beading my putting my other beads on simply because of the 8 o's underneath the 8 o were strung in. So I'm going to pick up two 11 o's on this side and then I'm going to pick up two 11 o's on this side. And that should space me over well enough so that I can use some other beads to string with now. So I want to use my green six millimeter beads and I'm going to use some of my red and some of my white beads and I think I'm going to begin with a green and then I'm going to pick up a white and then a red and then a green 
and then a white. Well, no, I want a white and then a green. I just don't have it together, guys. I don't know why, but I just don't have it together today. So that's what I have. I have a green, a white, a red, a white, and then a green. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. green and then I'm going to pick up two 110 seed beads on either side so that I am ready for my next two units of charms little charm dudes so two on this side two on this side perhaps it may not happen just may not there we go just like that and now I'm going to pick up my snowman on this side and bring him down and you'll have to keep centering your wire because it's not going to stay centered as you work so you'll just have to grab the two ends of your wires and push everything down to the middle making sure Santa Claus stays centered and then we're going to do the same thing on this side pick up the mitten unit and put it on. Come here. And it should slide right into that ADO. Like I said, if it doesn't, use a smaller wire and it should be fine. Then we're going to pick up two 11 O's on either side. Here. Come here. And here. And then we can just continue with our pattern. May have to change depending upon how many beads we need to do this. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and continue the pattern I've got. If I need to towards the end, I can always make it just 80 seed beads or I can make it, we have a lot of these white beads. We can make it with that towards the end if we run out of our other beads. Because I don't know how many beads you have left from the projects you've done, but I'm using what I have left from what I've already shown you to do. So I know if you're following me, you should have what I have. If you're making your own stuff, you may have to get something else out of your stash. And if you don't have the treasure box, you can use whatever you would like. Just as long as they're basically the same size and shape, you should come up with basically the same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to continue doing this off camera, and I'll come back and show you what I have. Okay, so this is what I did. I just continued my green, white, red, white, green, and then I put an 8-0. And then green, white, red, white, green, 8-0. And I did that until I have about 18 inches covered here. So you can do it as long as you want. You can cut your wire much longer than I did too. And even for an 18 inch, you might wanna go maybe 22 inches, just so you have more room to do your clasping. Once you have done that, and you've got your pattern established as long as you want it, then just put your two ends together, center your necklace, make sure both ends have basically the same amount of wire hanging out on the end here and then I'm going to take one and I'm going to just kind of clip it off then I'm going to take this end and I'm going to grab my crimp tube and put it on and I've ended on an 8-0 here as you can see and let me get this closer now that I've put my crimp tube on there I'm going to put on my clasping and then I'm going to take this wire and run it back through. You can see I don't have a lot to work with, but I can make it work. And I'm just going to put that wire right through that 80 seed bead. I might even be able to shove it through the green bead just because it's there and it wants to go there. And then I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers. 
and I'm going to figure out which side slides. Grab a hold of it. Yeah, that's not going to work. Just slide this down. I like to hold on to the loop usually, but that's not going to happen because I don't have a lot of wire. And on this side, I don't have to worry too much about my beads separating anyway because I can gather my tension on the other side. So now I pulled it down to where I have a decent little loop around my clasping. You don't want it to be really big, but you want free movement of the clasp. And then just try to arrange your wires so that they're parallel inside that tube. They're laying next to each other. They're not crossed. And then try to imagine where the center of those two wires are. Right in the middle of those two wires, you're going to place your crimping tool and you're going to squeeze and you're placing it in the second divot, the one closest to the handle. And then after you've squeezed, you should have a fold in the middle of that crimp tube, just like this. Then you're going to place that crimp tube in the first divot closest to the tip of the handles, making sure those two little tubes that you created around the wires are touching the crimping tool and squeeze again. And now you have a nice crimp. Cut this wire as close as you can to the bottom of the bead. And then you can just make sure as you tighten the other end that that wire goes down inside the beads. So you can see my wire isn't sticking out anywhere. It's down inside the beads. And I've took the little clip off the other side and I will do the exact same thing. I will drop my crimp tube down onto the wire. And then I will grab the other end of my clasping and put it on. Then I will go down into the crimp tube and see if I can slide through my beads like I did on the other side. It doesn't always cooperate, but I can at least get through that 8 if I can't get through the green bead. Okay, let's just go through that 8 -0 it's arguing with me. So I'm just going to go through the 8L. Oh, come on. That 8L must be kind of weird inside because it doesn't seem to want to go through. There we go. I got it. All right. And it also went through the green bead below it. There. So now I can grab onto the side that is not sliding. Let's see which side we've got here. And grab a hold of this guy. This is the side that doesn't slide. And I'll just hold on to it so I can feed my wire through and keep my beads tight together. Because when you try to do it without doing that, a lot of times your beads will slide apart and you'll have it tied up here, but down here you'll have gaps. So we'll just slide that down. And my little loop is a little too little, so I'm going to slide it back out a little bit. Like that. Now I'm going to look and see how my wire is laying inside. and make sure it's not crossed. And then imagine where my middle of my two wires are. Place my crimp tool on there and squeeze. And you can see I have encased both wires separately. So they are laying parallel. And then I put it back in the crimp tool sideways, making sure those two little tubes are touching the crimping tool and squeeze again and test your crimp, make sure it's good. And then just cut this wire really, really close to the bead. You should probably use flesh cutters instead of scissors, but you know, hey. And then I just slide it back into, I hope I was in frame, I just slide it, that little wire into the beads. And then I have a nice little necklace. 
So let me clean up my bead mat and I'll show you the necklace. And here it is, you guys. It really looks cute on. I just put it on, it lays perfectly on the neck. I just kind of gathered the back up here so it would fit in the camera better. But this is what it looks like. It's really cute, just whimsical and cute and cheery. And you have some charms left, so you could conceivably do something, make two of them or something else. The reason I didn't make earrings with these is because they don't mirror each other. Being one-sided, you can't even turn them over to make them mirror each other. So I made a necklace out of them. You could, We could also do a charm bracelet. Maybe I'll do that with the three that are left to make a charm bracelet and with some of the other charms that we have too. So it would work out just fine um, if you wanted to make just one necklace or you could make two, like I said. And we have other charms and things. And I'll go ahead and make a few more things. Um, I still have quite a bit of stuff left, so I'm going to continue. And we have that one big drop and several things in there. But if you didn't get the box, then you can also just make these units. You could make several of them and, and make a necklace out of it. Make these into earrings all by themselves. You don't have to put the charm on the end. This is a really nice little component to know how to do. It's very versatile. You can do a lot of stuff with it, and it's really cute. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.